Dave from Nimble Forged here, and in this video I'm going to share what I've learned from pushing the speed rate of the Fabricator Mini version 1.5. First, why would you want to mess with the speed of your printer? The quality could diminish and the layers might be weaker. One reason could be to push the printer to its limits, wanting to see how far it can go. Another reason for a faster speed is prototyping. The quicker you have your parts in hand, the faster you can have the final object. You could print a prototype quickly to check fit and after some tweaks have a model that is ready for a final print, one that has more infill, finer quality, etc. If you're not prototyping and just want to print stuff people have already made, you want it in your hands as fast as possible and bumping up the speed rate is an option. In my tests I've printed three different models four times each with the speed increasing 5 millimeters a second after each print. The results were surprising. Let's take a look. The first object I tested was a 10 millimeter calibration cube. The infill setting was 10% with a 0.2 millimeter quality setting and a skirt to prime the filament. Here are screenshots of the four different times for 15 millimeters a second, 20, 25, and 30. For this simple cube, the time difference between the slowest and fastest is only a few minutes. The speed increase doesn't save that much time for such a small print. Later I'll show the results of these prints. Next I printed the Poly Pikachu by Flowlistic on Thingiverse. Again 10% infill, 0.2mm quality. After the first print at 15mm a second, I had some problems. I'm only using blue tape and not doing anything special to keep the print stuck to the bed. The first few tries at 20 millimeters failed. The print got pulled up off the bed and started globbing up at the hot end. Not good. I'll show you the failed prints in a bit. Because of that, I had to put a raft in, which increased print times, but kept Pikachu from coming off the bed. The time didn't change too much though, maybe a few minutes. Now that I have all the prints done, Let's see the results. They're in order from left to right, 15 all the way up to 30 millimeters a second. First, the cubes. There isn't much difference between them. The faster ones do look a little warped, but not terrible. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish for the print and if slight variations are acceptable. Now Pikachu. What surprised me was the quality didn't change that much between the different prints. Even when it had to move back and forth between the body and tail, it would have to retract and extrude fairly quickly, but didn't really create problems or stringiness. The ears look the worst, but even at the slowest speed, they don't look too good. Over 8 minutes saved from the slowest to the fastest time. It's not a huge savings, but it's still better than nothing. Now these objects are both small, per times were below 30 minutes, and there were a few settings I could change to get better overall prints, especially when it gets to the ears of the Pikachu. But if you look at the prints from all four speeds of those two models, they aren't that different, which is a good thing. What happens with prints that take a bit longer? Well I printed these drawers from Fatal Error off of Thingiverse. The longest print took 1 hour and 16 minutes at the slowest speed, which was 15 millimeters a second, and a 0.3 millimeter layer height. The shortest print took 45 minutes at 30 millimeters a second. Since the shape is pretty simple and square, faster printing didn't affect the quality. Almost no difference. I noticed a little warping, but it could have been just from the room temperature fluctuating. The biggest thing was a half hour difference between the 15 and 30 millimeter a second print time. That's pretty good savings. If I'd used 30 from the get-go, I would have saved almost an hour of overall print time.
Those are my tests so far and I learned some interesting things. Quality didn't suffer too much as I increased the speed, at least with this test. More complex models might not bear as well, but I'm happy with the results overall. Should I try and push it faster? What test should I have done? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.